greet all of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. I also greet our pastor in her absence. So we thank God for her. And I thank God that I'm here standing before you and we are in the presence of God. Can you, can you wave your hands? Can we wave our hands wherever you are seated? Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Our God is good. And all the times, thank you that you are here in his presence. We are going to quickly go to the word of God. I believe that the message that Jesus says for us today is going to change our lives. It's going to change the way we think, the way we do things. And we also greet the viewers wherever you are. And we thank God for the grace. You are also partaking in the grace. Stay tuned. There is a message that God wants me and you to, to hear today. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. I thank God once again for granting me the grace. It's not an easy t thing to come and stand before the lamp of God. If we look today, the pulpits are being used if you have got an issue with anyone. You know, I cannot confront you. I have to wait for an opportunity to come on the pulpit. Or if I've got a case against any church, I have to wait for a, an opportunity like this to use it, to address you. But I pray that the Lord may help the servants of God, the body of Christ, so that as we stand before the lamp, we preach the gospel of Jesus. Not our emotions, not our own issues. I pray, I, it's my prayer always to say, Lord, help me. There might be many things that are happening around our lives, in my life, but may God grant me the grace that I may speak the word of God without addressing any issue. Hallelujah. That's why Paul says that pray that I may declare this gospel as I ought to do it. Because the gospel can be preached in any how, in any way. Paul says that even in pretense, the gospel can be preached. Even those in false churches, they use the word. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So as a child of God, you ought to have that relationship with Christ. You have that fellowship with the Holy Spirit. That wherever you go, you must know that in this place there is God. Hallelujah. Where there is no God, I mean if you have a relationship with Christ, with the Holy Spirit, you can tell that here there is God. Here there is no God. So I'm encouraging you also to grow. There are messages where there is God speaking. The Spirit of God addressing us. There are also messages where it's a human being, where it's intellect. Because a human being can do anything. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. I respect people who have the spirit of discernment. I salute those and I pray that God may give me that gift. So that you can discern. That spirit is dangerous. I mean in a good way. Because you can tell that here there is God, here there is no God. So you as a child of God also. Pray that God may help you to differentiate you can tell whether there is the spirit of God or no. Because there are many churches and still we use the same word of God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. I'm just sensitizing you to say the days that we are in are evil. So you as a person, you ought to cultivate your own relationship with Christ. You have a fellowship with Christ so that you may not be moved to and from. Because all of us will use the word. Sangu must also use the word. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. And I thank God that you are here to listen from the word of God. Your healing, your miracle starts in the word. There are some people who only come for laying of your hands. They don't want to listen to the word. It doesn't work that way. Your miracle starts from the word. Listening, you listening from the word. And I encourage the brethren to say as we listen to the word, it's not a matter of hearing the word. It's not theory. We must put it into practice. 
it's easy for me to can preach and fail to do what I'm saying. That's what Jesus also said. Do what they are telling you, but do not do what they are doing. So anything is possible. But I'm here to encourage you to say you have to cultivate your relationship with Christ. Hallelujah. Be a true child of God without any bitterness, without any issue with anyone. Just come to save God. Hallelujah. You will enjoy God. In the house of God, if you want politics, you'll get them. If you want Christ, you'll get him. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. The theme of our message says, be ready all the times. I know you may not jump or you may not say amen to this message because such messages are those kind of messages that when they come, they require me and you to do something. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. There is something that you as a person, you must do. There is a part that God does. And let me tell you something. From God's side, I mean from the side of God, everything is perfect. Hallelujah. So when things are not happening in your life, don't blame God. Look at your life. Don't look at anyone else. Look at your life. Where am I failing? Because many a times, we want to point fingers. No. I've taught myself to say, okay, if things are not right, let me look at myself before I blame the next person. What about me? Hallelujah. So these kind of messages, they are there for you to look in your life, not at your neighbor. Hallelujah. Because this word is coming to you and me. I say the theme of the message says, be ready all the times. There is something that I've learned about God. When God is about to do something, or when God is about to take you to another place, he prepares you. Hallelujah. He doesn't just take you there, man as preparation. First, there is a preparation that, that takes place. He prepares you to where you are going. If we look at the children of Israel, when they were moved from Egypt to Israel, to the promised land, to Canaan, from Egypt to the promised land, God had to prepare them first. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. God prepares. Manas preparation will make mistakes. You can be disqualified where you are serving. It might be ministry-wise. Even when you want a marriage, prepare yourself for marriage. Hallelujah. Are we together? People want things manas preparation. When you want marriage, are you ready for marriage? Because there, there is a certain behavior that is required of you in a marriage or anywhere where you want to serve. There is a behavior. There is a kind of life that you must live. Hallelujah. Are we together, church? There are many things that we come across as we live in this path of faith. There are things that many of us, we don't care much about. Like the life to come. As children of God, I'm here to remind you that now that you are born again, it's not about you coming to church only. Hallelujah. Coming to the services. No. There is a life after what is happening now. Hallelujah. That's why the message says, be ready all the times. This is what I've learned. When you don't know where you are going, you will live anyhow. Anyway can be your destiny. You can change and say, I've arrived. And many a times when you don't know where you are going, you are not disciplined. Hallelujah. Or you, you are easily moved by whatever comes your way. So, but I want you to understand this message when we say be ready all the times. Many a times, if there is something that we want to achieve here on earth, we take time to prepare, isn't it? We prepare ourselves. 
But have you prepared for life after this? What is happening now? It doesn't end by accepting Jesus Christ. No. Hallelujah. Are we together, church? It doesn't end here. That's why many a times, yes, we have got Christians. You are born again. That is very good. That's wonderful. But after being born again, why are you born again? Have you ever asked yourself, why am I born again? Where am I going? After death, where am I going? If you don't know where you are going, that's why I've got Christians who today they are in, tomorrow they are out. Hallelujah. Because, I mean, you don't know, you don't even care. You only look at now, short-term benefits, I want to enjoy now. But what about tomorrow? I'm telling you, if you know where you are going after now, I mean, after this life, we will live a disciplined life as children of God. Hallelujah. There won't be time to say, today I'm in, tomorrow I'm out. Because you know where you are going. So this message is a reminder of what Jesus said. There were those who were told, this book is a book of life. There are no stories. It's real. Bible is life. Are we together, church? So don't read it as a novel to say, ah, it was just a story. This life, it happened. The Bible in Corinthians says that whatever happened here, as we read the word of God, is there for us to can learn. Hallelujah. You learn from the mistakes that others did or the good that those who lived before us did. We learn from them so that we may correct our mistakes. You as a parent or as an elder, now, I believe you don't want your children to go the way I, don't, I believe that you don't want your children to go through what you went through. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Why? Because you know, many of us are where we are today because we refuse to be corrected. We refuse to be warned. That's why we find ourselves where we are. Hallelujah. But I'm not here to condemn you. But I'm saying learn from those mistakes. Learn from your past. Your past must not bring you down. Hallelujah. Your past must help you to prepare you for the future and also to teach others who are coming before you. In my language, they say, in Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Are we together, church? So we learn from those who lived before us Okay, let's go to the word of God. I'm not saying stories. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. We are going to read from the book of Matthew, chapter 24, from verse 36. I pray that you may listen. You remember this message, one of the good days. I pray that it may not be too late. Because this book of life is not about stories, it's not a movie. It's life. Yes, you can read from verse 36 to 42. Matthew chapter 24 from 36 to 42 in NIV it says, But about that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, People were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. This is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken and the other left. Verse 42. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. I hope you heard. The Bible says that it happened during the times of Noah. 
Hallelujah. People were marrying, people were enjoying life. It says that it will also happen. The same way it happened. We were taught last week that Noah, he lived a what? A righteous life. A blameless life. He lived faithfully. Hallelujah. In a corrupt world, Noah lived faithfully so. Hallelujah. And he was favored by God. Because God doesn't destroy the righteous with the ungodly. In the corrupt world where you are living, you ought to be righteous. Know who you are as a child of God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. I thank God that this scripture says it clearly. That these people were being warned. To say, please live right. Here we are told that no one knows the day. Even Jesus himself doesn't know. But you must always keep watch. You must always be ready. It doesn't matter who you are. This message is for everyone. Born again or none born again. Because many a times, as children of God, we tend to forget. And many a times we play church. But it's an encouragement to say, look at your life. I remember one statement by the bishop one day. He said, the way people are living, it doesn't matter to go to hell with many people. I, I, I don't want to go to, 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 I don't want to lead people to hell. I'd rather go to heaven with few people. Hallelujah. I want to get a church to say, if I know very well that I'm not doing things right in a God's way, this message is there to correct me and you, no matter who we are. Even myself, I must find myself ready. Not to do in and out. Hallelujah. No one knows the day. Jesus himself doesn't know the day you will come. But the Bible says that you will come like a thief. And I'm here to tell you that Jesus doesn't wait for you to say, yeah, now I want to go. Let her go and do wrong. Then I'll come when she's away or she's out. No. The Bible says that it doesn't want any one of us to perish but that every, every man may come to repentance. It took him life to say, I want to die for everyone. I want all mankind to receive eternal life. Hallelujah. I want to gather church. All mankind, it is not in the plan of God for you to go to hell. No, it's not his plan. I want to gather church. It's not in his plan. He wants every man to receive Jesus Christ. That's why he took Jesus Christ's life to die for me and you. Even those people that are being used by the devil, Jesus Christ died for them. Only that they are deceived. But he doesn't want any one of us to perish. Hallelujah. And I want you to know that there are two ways to go. If you are not raptured, you will die. What you call change address. And I'm telling you, once that time has arrived, there is no repentance after that. Hallelujah. Remember the parable in the book of Luke 15 when the rich man and Lazarus He says, call Lazarus to come and bring water. The man was burning. But he said, no, there is, a, there is a boundary. Those are on the other side. They cannot come to the other side. So this message is there to say to me and you, let us get ready. Always. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. I know many of you won't say amen. It happened during the times of Noah. People were being warned. No, you want to deny us pleasure. We want pleasure. Let's go all out. 
Let's enjoy pleasure. But I'm not here to say you'll be blessed. I know you'll be blessed when you put things right. Hallelujah. Are we together? You are a seed of Abraham. So blessings are yours. Healing is yours. Deliverance is yours. It's your right. But it takes you to put things right. Hallelujah. These things that we are struggling with, once you put things right, everything will flow. Are we together, church? Are you getting what I'm saying? So be encouraged this day. Be encouraged to say, Lord, help me. I want to put things right. I must always be ready. Who knows the day you will go. Either if you don't die, which we say change address, you will be raptured. Hallelujah. The Bible said that those who, who died in Christ, they are the ones who will rise when Jesus Christ comes. They are the ones who will rise first and will be, and we who are alive we will go, we will follow them. So don't say, no, I used to believe that after I die, then everything is finished. No, there is resurrection. Hallelujah. And I thank God that Jesus Christ said in his word, in John 14, he says, let not your heart be troubled. In my father's house, there are many mansions. So I'm going to prepare for you. Where I am, I want you to come. Hallelujah. Are we together? That's what Jesus says. He says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Where I am, I want you to come. So, and he says that I will come and fetch you. Are you ready when he comes? <laughs> Hallelujah. So it's a question that I'm asking you. Are you ready when he comes? Because you'll come like a thief. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. I'm telling you the honest truth. It doesn't matter who you are. I understand why Paul says, I beat my body. After preaching to others, I don't want to find myself being disqualified. I can preach here and miss the heavens. That's why Paul says, I discipline my body so that I may not be disqualified. When that day comes, because it will come like a thief. And I'm telling you the honest truth. We are not here forever. Hallelujah. If you are thinking I will live forever, no. Yes, there will be rapture. If you don't go by death, you will go by rapture. But one or the other, all of us will go. Hallelujah. And what the kind of life that you are living now is the one that will qualify you for eternal life or eternal condemnation. It's not stories. It's real. It also happened during the times of Sodom and Gomorrah. Do you remember? You remember? The Bible says that. Okay, where we started, the example that I gave you of Noah, the Bible says that people were living a wicked life. God repented why he created men. He says, why did I create men? God was angry. Hallelujah. Why was he angry? Because of the kind of life people were living. Then he said, Noah, because you are a righteous man, build an ark. The same floods that are going to lift this ark is the same flood that is going to destroy these people. Hallelujah. The same word that is being spoken today, that you are listening to, is the same word that will judge you. Remember that day. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. So look at your life. You just have to look at your life. Even the beloved of God, if it's time for you to go, you can go in any way. You can go maybe through an accident or you can go through a sickness. Elijah was a man, Elisha was a man of God. He was a prophet of God. The Bible says that he fell sick and he died through the sickness. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Out together, church. Even through a sickness, God can take you. Whichever way he can take you. 
even in through an accident. I can go. What is important is where am I standing? As long as I go, what, whichever way I will go, as long as I am in Christ. Hallelujah. Are we together? So be ready all the times. There were people who were thinking tomorrow I will do this. And they never saw that tomorrow that they were talking about. You may have plans. The Bible says that many are plans in a man's heart. But God is a final word. We are thinking of next year. We are preparing for next year. Isn't it? But have you prepared for the life after this? I thank God that also God, what he does when he wants to preserve you, there is a man from the word of God. The Bible says that that man, he was ruling, he was a king in Israel. They sinned. But when he, reali when he realized his sin, he went back to God and said, Lord, I'm wrong. He fasted. He humbled himself and go before God. And God said to him, because you have repented, you are not going to see the disaster that I'm going to cause in this city. I have forgiven you, but I will take you to your ancestors. Hallelujah. God didn't repent to say, I'm not going to destroy this. But he had to say, okay, because you, you have repented, you will sleep. In other words, you will die so that you won't see the disaster that I'm going to cause. God can preserve you by taking you early so that you won't see the disaster. Or so that you may not sin. Hallelujah. Are we together, church? Is someone getting something? Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? Because you'll come like a thief. Jesus says that both us Christians and people of the world, we are not ready for his coming. Hallelujah. That's why many a times you are in, you are out. As a child of God, how can we have two girlfriends or more than two? How can I have three boyfriends? How can I sleep around when I'm a married man? Or how can I sleep around with married woman? How can you be in a relationship with a married man? Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So these are the things that we don't want to hear because in our own eyes it seems to be good. I'm enjoying life. But we must say these things as a child of God. You are here to live for Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible says that Lord, during that time of Sodom and Gomorrah, the Bible said that people were enjoying life. You know, enjoying. <laughs> people were enjoying life. They were doing these parties where they were enjoying. But Lord, the Bible said that he was a righteous man. So he had to experience those, that kind of life every day. So that kind of life that others were living. He was being tormented in his soul. But he knew that, no, I'm not supposed to live this way. Hallelujah. Let's read 2 Peter chapter 2. I know you won't like me because of this message. But uh, uh, let me say I don't mind. You cannot please everyone. In life, you must know that you will never please everyone. Why are you bitter about me? What have I done to you? So why do you live a bitter life? Why do you hate me? Second Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter 2 from verse 4 to 9. Second Peter chapter 2 from verse 4 to 9 in NIV it says, For if God did not spare angels when they were sinned, Okay, when they can sinned, you repeat there? If God did not what? For if God did not spare angels yes. when they sinned, uh -huh. but sent them to hell, 
putting them in chains of darkness to be held for judgment. If he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on it, ungodly people. When he brought the flood to ungodly people, yes, during the times of Noah. But protected Noah. But protected Noah. A preacher of righteousness. A preacher of righteousness, yes. And seven others. Mm. If he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah mm. by burning them to ashes and made them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly. And if he rescued Lord, a righteous man, who was distressed by the, by the depraved conduct of the lawless. Mm. For that righteous man living among them day after day was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. Mm. If, this so, if this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to hold the unrighteous for the punishment on the day of judgment. Hallelujah. Did you hear that? During the times of Noah, people were warned. During the time of Lord Sodom and Gomorrah, people were warned. God, that's why I said God has to prepare you first. If he's about to destroy a city, you'll give you a warning. That's what he was doing even during the times of the prophets. You will say, go and tell the Israelites not to do this. He will give you warnings first. He will make you away. Hallelujah. It doesn't just come and destroy. God is not cruel. Out together, church. He is not a cruel God. He is so loving. And is patient with us. But he wants us to change. You want us to know that there is a day of the Lord. You are not just here religiously so. I'm going to sun, I'm going to Tuesday service, I'm going to Wednesday service, I'm going to Sunday service. But am I ready to meet my master? Am I taking heed of warning, of correction? It's common with men to refuse correction and warnings. That's why I said many of us who are where we are today, because we refused to be corrected. Hallelujah. We refused when your parents were saying, stop living this kind of life. Go to school. Go and study. The teachers, stop playing. Read. But I'm not here to condemn us. I'm saying we learn from our mistakes. But what I'm emphasizing is, it's common to us men not to listen not to heed to correction. When we are warned, we don't want to listen. I pray that it may not be too late because Jesus is coming back. Hallelujah. I have to face myself and say, you know what, man? Not any, anyone. Maybe you can do it to yourself. Say, you know what? Evangelist, Jesus is coming. I mean, facing yourself. Is coming back. It's not a story. Hallelujah. Keep watch. Get ready. Am I talking to ready people? Are you ready for his coming? When we sing, dancing, are you ready? When he's dancing, are you ready for Jerusalem? Or you are just singing because this gentleman who play nice, the beat is nice, you are dancing to the beat. Are you also ready for the words that you are saying? Hallelujah. When we say we are ready for Jerusalem, we are saying we are ready for Jesus to come back. Because the Bible says that there will be a new Jerusalem. Yes, Jerusalem is there now. I mean the real one. There is also another Jerusalem, a new Jerusalem. That is coming. Are we together? It's written in the word. Jesus also said himself, by himself and said, I am coming like a thief in Revelations. I am coming like a thief. <laughs> when a thief is about, when a thief is coming to your house, they won't tell you when they are coming. Otherwise, you'll wait and say, okay, the thief is coming at this time. But you don't know. Many of you, they stole from your house and you never saw them. 
That's how Jesus will come. He will come like a thief. So each one of us ought to be ready. And there where we are going, there is no casting out of demons. There is no crying. Hallelujah. We will be worshipping our God. And there is something that I've learned from the word of God. I have learned that worship is taught. Hallelujah. Prayer is taught. This thing doesn't come automatic. When I'm born again today, I'm born knowing how to pray. Yes, there is a certain level where I can pray. But prayer is taught. That's why Jesus Christ has to teach his disciples how to pray. Hallelujah. Worship is taught. Why am I saying so? Because it's there in the word. That's why I say it. When God is taking you somewhere, he prepares you first. I mean, if you are from the world, you don't know anything about Christ, how will you know how to worship God? There are things that you have to learn in the kingdom of God. That's why even this word, you have to be taught. That's why they are preachers of the word. They are teachers of the word. We must be taught so that we may teach others. Hallelujah. This is also helping us to be ready for the coming of the Lord. Let's read 2 Kings. Okay, before we go there, can we read this? 2 Peter chapter 3. Can you read? Uh, I will jump other verses. Can you read verse 4? Okay, read verse 1. Second Peter chapter 3, verse yes. 1. I want you to listen very carefully, people of God. Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. Yeah, to wholesome thinking. To stimulate you to wholesome thinking. Hallelujah. So that you may think in another way. So that you may come to your senses. Uh -huh. Verse 4. Verse 4 says, they will say, where is this coming he promised? Where is this coming he promised? Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. You hear now. They will say, where is the coming? He promised ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it is since the beginning of creation. I have once heard this statement. Hallelujah. When I, I was new in Christ, I heard people saying, ah, you will fall. You, ah. They have been saying this all along. They were saying Jesus is coming back. Ever since you were born, you are young. I believe some of you have been told this. You say no.